television. Look at oh. that. Look at that right hand. But but what did we miss? What didn't you see? Go back. The sidestep. No, the blinding jab that that ah. sets it up where you don't see it. Watch the jab is just a decoy, just yeah. so he can hit it with the right, so you just don't see it. it. Right. What a beautiful sidestep too. Right after he lands the right hand. Beautiful. Look, Look at, at that. that. Right there. Well, that's why he's the greatest finisher of all time. Majority decision against <laughs> <the> Rush. <laughs> ways to set up your opponent. Wouldn't it be nice if you could blindfold your opponent where you wouldn't see what was coming? Well, there is a way to do it with your hands, not a blindfold. Well, yeah, when you jab at him, you jab it right, you throw that jab right in his eyes, right there. When you jab, boom, right hand right behind him. Not boom, boom, but boom, almost like the same punch in sequence. Seconds of the second round. Oh, big right hand, and down goes Rooney. A tremendous straight right hand. 15 seconds now for Joshua to finish. Third knockdown of the fight for Anthony Joshua. Right hand, and down goes Pulev, and that's it. Boom, boom, boom. Down goes four. He never sees it coming. Even while you were answer, he used it to knock out Floyd Patterson. It's a good punch. It's like having a blindfold. Big advantage. Devastating. Solid balance. Oh, a left hook there by Whitaker. I'll tell you what, right now, things don't look good for Chavez. Nope. Whitaker's getting too much steam going, and he's going to pull. All right, let's something. take a look at, at Whitaker. Look at that shot, right in there. Again, Whitaker's being sharp, using the jab, boom, right on the button. He could, if he could punch, Bobby. Look at Tommy just mittering him with that left hand. Look at him looking to drop that big right now. Watch Tommy just kind of measures him with a left hand and he wants to load up the right hand and bang, there it is, right there, right on the cheek, right on the money, and then he catches him again, boom, again, and then finally down he goes, and it's a hard knockdown. Lead left hand by Hopkins. Right hand, drops, show it up. So the Mexicans are out here rooting like mad for Victor Ortiz. Chopping right hand by Mayweather. Another right hand by Mayweather. And another one. And Mayweather backed off a shot coming to him and then landed a right hand. Well, we get a look at Mayweather with the good right hand. Look at the leverage on it. All of a sudden, standing straight. As boxing enthusiasts, we often get too caught up in the excitement of the knockout and power punches. But the small fine details that dominate fights are what we should be paying attention to. The art of deception is an art that not many boxers master. But for those that desire to be a champion, it is an absolute art you should dedicate your time in learning and your training. And if you haven't guessed what today's video is about, I wanted to cover the function of blinding your opponent's vision to set up a powerful strike. As you have seen, one such deceptive method to set up and clear a path for the backhand is by occupying your opponent's field of vision so that your following punch can throw with bad intentions and with no interruption. And the most basic combination you can apply to this is of course, the typical one-two. And from watching multiple champions over the years, as you saw at the start of this video, there are different ways you can momentarily blind your opponent to set up a strike. The most obvious is of course, that quick one too, where you throw a jab with power to the opponent's head before immediately throwing a right hand. The jab impact usually blinds or distracts the opponent's vision while the immediate follow-up of the straight hand is followed. And out of all the different methods I'll be showing you, this is probably the most common and easiest to master. But you must remember everything is situational in boxing. Your timing and your range must be on point before you can even consider setting this up. The next version I guess is a much slower pace where you stick out your lead hand after throwing. And you might have heard the term sticky jab before or a touch jab. Preferably you want to do it at a slightly slower pace so your opponent will not be alerted or suspect anything to get him into a defensive mode. When doing this, the change of pace of quickly throwing the backhand or straight punch can catch your opponent by surprise. 
now I know on my boxing channel, but I can't help but notice UFC fighter Israel Adesanya is one of the best I've seen at doing this, taking advantage of his long reach before immediately following up with that right hand. And the reason this is so effective usually is the opponent is instead distracted by the sticky jab in front of their face. Just imagine a fly is buzzing around the front of your face. You're no doubt going to try and swipe it away or move your head in most cases. And the sticky jab acts as that fly. And the moment your opponent tries to get out of the way or move it out of their vision is when, of course, you strike. Well, you don't just have to throw a straight punch after this, you can throw a wide hook or even a timely uppercut. And a great example of this was when Floyd Mayweather faced Canelo, for example. And overall, I've just felt fighters with a longer reach have benefited from using this over the years against typically more aggressive brawler swarmer styles. And the sticky jab, if used correctly, can be devastating. Now very similar to the sticky jab of course is using the lead hand to frame and it's slightly different in the sense that you're using your glove or forearm to measure and control your opponent to once again set up a follow up punch. Now in my opinion I think it works best for fighters with a longer reach but obviously not in all cases. One of the best to ever do it was of course Thomas Hearns who had a tremendous reach for the weight division he was in and quite often would frame off using the lead hand or glove just long enough to stop or block the opponent's vision and to give him a direct target to land his right hand. In his incredible knockout over Cuevas to become world champion, he used this to directly target his chin. And even against Sugar Ray Leonard in their rematch, leading Leonard to be shook to his core. But once again, it was the initial frame of the lead hand which helped block the vision. At a closer range, things on the inside are slightly different. Now holding is obviously illegal in boxing, but at one point, one of your favourite fighters will have done this to set up an attack, where they look to hold the opponent momentarily to give them the advantage to land. Floyd Mayweather once again was someone who did this a lot on the inside, while you also had the likes of Andrew Ward use this too, but to get it away from being so obvious, they would use their forearm instead in these scenarios, once again blocking the opponent's vision from seeing any follow-up punch, while even keeping them off balance. Throwing multiple jabs at once can be a very useful technique to help back off your opponent, even defensively, while it can quickly put you on the offensive, which in turn forces your opponent to block or move out the way. But throwing the lead hand in bunches can also act as a way to obscure the opponent's vision too, and if timed correctly, can help set up your backhand power punch and other combinations. Personally, one of the best at doing this I feel was Muhammad Ali as he was floating on the outside as he was very good at throwing multiple jabs at the guard before firing a quick right hand out of nowhere. Even the likes of Larry Holmes was very good at this too, while Pernell Whitaker was also very effective at doing this from a southpaw stance. Interestingly, it shows you don't always have to be in the front foot to set this up. While Willie Pastrano, who I quoted at the start of this video, used a similar double jab cross setup against Terry Downs, hurting him in the process. This is Pastrana now trying to dazzle his man, and he's got him with the right hand, the dance is going. Round 11. I also want to give you some examples of Southpaw versus Orthodox and vice versa. Now remember, you can reverse all this as an Orthodox or a Southpaw fighter, depending who I'm talking about. Now there's also a similar way the sticky blinding jab can play a factor in those Orthodox and Southpaw matchups, particularly when a fighter is using a higher guard. And due to both being in open stances, usually that backhand is the ideal punch to throw. One of the best I've seen at setting up this punch from a Southpaw stance was former light heavyweight champion Adonis Stevenson. He was very good at stepping the jab while making sure to take the outside angle. In most cases, it was in devastating effect. And we've also seen Floyd use this successfully in his setup against Southpaw Victor Ortiz from a back foot position, hovering the jab just long enough to obscure the vision to set up the follow up right hand. While another tactic he liked to use was a simple jab up top to the guard to occupy, but also block the vision for the next punch. 
This gives the perfect opportunity to attack the body with the back hand, which can obviously help pick away your opponent and disrupt their rhythm. In more recent years, we've seen the likes of Shakur Stevenson or even Terence Crawford use this in their fights. Finally, the next level and perfect blinding setup is to of course intentionally not land your jab, but instead use this to temporarily blind their vision. This requires perfect timing and awareness of range to set this up, and it can usually work best when an opponent is using a higher guard or even has a lower guard. Two of the best examples I've seen of doing this were Alexis Arguello and Bernard Hopkins. In Arguello versus Kevin Rooney, the Nicaraguan had worked out the distance and range before throwing, as he was able to slip past Rooney's punches. The rule of thumb is, if the jab is landing, your right hand is definitely in range, due to the rotation of your body throwing through the line, it will most likely hit through the target. Now sometimes the punch doesn't need to directly blind the opponent, the quickness of the jab can even draw the eyes of the opponent to the glove, you just need to make sure the right hand is in perfect motion behind it, as Teddy Atlas pointed out at the start of this video. Oh. For Bernard Hopkins, he instead picked up Shumanov was using a lower lead hand and had worked out over the previous rounds, he could instead look to intentionally not land the jab, but set up the right. Once again, this is perfect like Arguello's as he was able to throw in that one sequence. Lead left hand by Hopkins. Right hand drops Shumanov. Oh. Mastering the blinding jab setup can be a game changer in a boxing bout especially when executed properly, as it can simply set up a significant blow or even a knockout to help you win a fight. However, it is important to understand the methods of using these different setups, not just as an offensive output, but so you are aware of an opponent you may face in competition or sparring trying to set you up. While it's important to note again that your timing range need to be on point for any of these, while you must throw in sequence and use it in the right situation. I'd love to hear your thoughts on some of these blending setups. Is there a particular one you think is the best to use? Love to hear your thoughts. This has been Jamie from Boxing Life. Thanks so much for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next one.